I'm officially a YouTuber, is yeah. I think what I'm feeling right now. <laughs> you are. This is it. I'm launching a new show. Journalistically rigorous, genuinely optimistic explanations about technology. Like Black Mirror, but the opposite and journalism. Maybe the world won't actually be terrible in the future. I think I could learn better and do more if I weren't getting nightmares. Every episode is gonna be a deep dive into an idea that could change all of our lives, that could be huge if it comes true. And I'm gonna call it huge if true. Let me explain. I'm a video journalist. I've worked for Vox for the past five years. I mostly cover tech and economics. You might have seen my stuff on Vox's Netflix show, Explained, or Vox's YouTube channel. That's the internet. Or my own TikTok. This is NFT's Explained, take one. A few months ago, I found this old newspaper article. It's on the effort to build the first airplanes. Here it is. Flying machines which do not fly. <clears throat> If it requires, say, a thousand years to fit for easy flight a bird which started with rudimentary wings, it might be assumed that the flying machine, which will really fly, might be evolved by the combined and continuous efforts of mathematicians from in one million to 10 million years. In other words, give up already. Now look at the date. This was published October 9th, 1903. Two months later, the Wright brothers took their famous assisted flight. That article sent me down a rabbit hole into how we originally talked about ideas that we now know change the world and how we talk about new ideas today. And there's a pattern from it's not possible to it's too expensive, they can't get the cost down, to do people really need that? To, oh, it's just a fad. And then, oh my God, it changed the world. Journalists love to shit on new ideas as implausible. Not all, obviously, and I'm a journalist. But media business incentives aside, those are often just easier stories to tell, and people really like to read them. My question is, what are we missing now? I honestly don't know the answer. That's the fun part. There are a lot of ideas, technologies, policies that are in the news right now, and I don't know which will successfully improve our lives. But some of them will. And I'd like to do more as a journalist to rigorously engage with that possibility sooner. You might ask, why bother? So what if we're a little bit pessimistic, a little bit late to the game? Well, for one thing, I think we could do a better job at guiding new tools early, at course correcting together before things go off the rails. And for another thing, maybe we'd all feel like there was more that we could do to make the world better. That's really the biggest thing. I spend a lot of time on TikTok these days, and there's this feeling that the, the world, world is just not a good place to live in. That it's getting worse. Year 2045. I don't think we're gonna survive. Political nihilism, economic fear. Constant fear at the back of our minds. And I don't think things will get any better for Gen Z. This is how I cope. I like how say the ocean is rising like I give a shit. You say the whole world's ending. People feel this way because we have real problems and there's more that we could do to fix them. And because there's a lot of very lucrative fear-mongering going on. Climate change, irreversible and getting worse fast. It's likely to get much worse before it gets much better. It's not getting any better, it's getting worse. We are not entering a brave new world, but a lazy new world. What kind of world are we creating for our kids? Stay with me, that's next. So we tell people specific ideas won't work. We tell them the world is getting worse and it's scary. And then we turn around and we're like, oh my God, why are young people so pessimistic? We need them to fix stuff. It's incredibly difficult to remain optimistic. This is why I can't read the news because then I feel helpless and powerless. That's why I want to bring a more optimistic point of view into the conversation. You might be thinking you're a journalist. It's your job to be skeptical, to point out challenges, to share where things could go wrong. I agree. I just think I have another responsibility also, to help people imagine what could go right. That's why I went independent and I'm starting this new show. In every episode, we're gonna take one big idea and imagine that it works. What would that world look like? What do we need to do to make sure that it helps the most people? How does it compare to the status quo? What could go right? I decided to leave Vox to do it, not because I don't love Vox, I do, and I hope that I do more with them in the future, but because I wanted to take on these topics in a way that felt 
really personal. This is a public pool near where my parents live. And had a lot of my tone of voice in it. Am I doing a good job vlogging? You're gonna see me grappling with these questions and um, just like exploring these topics in an experimental way. This is it. And it's gonna be scrappier. It's gonna be something that's mine. And I hope that you'll join me for that ride. The journalist and the sci-fi nerd in me are both really excited and I'm gonna have a lot of help. You can expect to see incredible experts. Try to imagine. What would we do? How would we live? I find it fascinating. If building Reddit has taught me anything, when you get enough momentum around such a big idea, there's just no going back. And other journalists who I admire. Like, why would anyone go in the damn lake? And my family helping me. It works. And you. I really want to feature you asking questions. Tell me what you want me to cover. Tell me what topics make you feel most pessimistic or overwhelmed. I'll look into them for you. I'll try and find the best ways that we have to solve them. I can't promise that they'll work, but I can promise that they'll be huge if true. Should they subscribe? Kiss if they should subscribe. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thor says subscribe.